chapter thirty joy unbounded the news of the result of luigi vampa's trial spread with the utmost rapidity throughout rome and occasioned the wildest rejoicing still further augmenting the popularity of monte cristo and captain morrel who were credited by the roman populace with having brought about the dreaded brigand chief's conviction and inspired his sentence everywhere while the vast importance of old pasquale solara's testimony was recognized and admitted the wretched shepherd himself was execrated as an unnatural heartless father as a diabolical scoundrel without a single redeeming trait the fact of his having turned state's evidence saved him from the heavy hand of the law but his mortal wound would soon rid the world of him and this circumstance occasioned hearty congratulation in all quarters the morning succeeding vampa's trial a messenger arrived at the hotel de france from the count massetti bearing a brief note in which the aged nobleman begged his son to come to him at once giovanni exhibited this note triumphantly to zuleika and the friends who had laboured so untiringly and successfully in his cause and together with the count of monte cristo and m morrel immediately repaired to the palazzo massetti in monte cristo's barouche the old count received his son with open arms and cordially greeted monte cristo and maximilian giovanni said he frankly i admit that i was wrong that i was led astray by what seemed to me to be convincing proof my pride and honour revolted at the stain apparently cast upon them and i acted as almost any roman father would have done i acknowledge that i was hasty that i proceeded to extremities without due reflection or examination these admissions in the presence of your noble self-sacrificing friends cost me dear but you observe that i do not shrink from them notwithstanding the deep humiliation i humbly ask your forgiveness and restore all i have taken from you again you are my beloved son and heir the old nobleman paused greatly affected his eyes were full of tears tears of mingled contrition and delight the viscount's emotion was such that for an instant he was unable to reply he however recovered control of himself with a mighty effort and said in a voice tremulous with his colossal joy father i have nothing to forgive appearances warranted all you did and i can only thank heaven that the truth has been developed before it was too late with these words he threw himself upon the old patrician's neck the count embraced him drawing him to his heart and their tears mingled together for giovanni also was weeping now slowly and as if reluctantly releasing his recovered and rehabilitated son the count turned to m morrel captain he said i owe you an ample apology for my haughty and imperious treatment when you stated to me the object of your mission to rome i tender it at this moment and venture to hope that you will accept it even though it comes at the eleventh hour count replied maximilian i should be worse than a boor did i not accept it here is my hand in token of my renewed friendship and esteem old massetti took the captain's proffered hand and pressed it warmly you fully sustain the reputation of the great nation to which you belong said he with the utmost cordiality you are as noble as you are generous count answered m morrel bowing profoundly you flatter me say rather that i am a french soldier and as such never shrink from my duty no matter in what shape it may come as you please captain returned the aged nobleman with an agreeable smile to my apology i must however add my gratitude for all you have done to aid giovanni and in the expression of that gratitude i must include madame morrel of whose heroic exploit in the Colosseum and subsequent devotion to my son in his hour of mental darkness i have heard maximilian again bowed profoundly advancing to the count of monte cristo the elder massetti said now your excellency it is your turn 
your name and deeds have long been familiar to me but to whom are they not familiar still though you have frequently honoured rome with your illustrious presence never have i had the pleasure of meeting you until this happy day when i too am included in the long list of those who have received overwhelming benefits at your hands edmund dantes count of monte cristo i owe to you my son's restoration to sanity brought about by little less than a miracle a blessing almost as great as his rehabilitation for which also i am on the endless roll of your debtors monte cristo bowed but made no reply my debt vast as it is continued old massetti is i learn to be yet further augmented by an alliance between our two houses and i need not tell you that this increase of my obligations will be a burden of joy that i shall accept with thanks to heaven for the signal favour shown me monte cristo repeated his bow and said you ratify the compact between our two children then count massetti with more delight than i can express replied the latter enthusiastically may i ask another favour of your excellency he added suddenly certainly said monte cristo somewhat astonished and casting a look of inquiry at his venerable host in that case resumed the aged nobleman i would like to welcome your daughter immediately to the palazzo massetti she shall be sent for without an instant's delay answered monte cristo giovanni return in the barouche to the hotel de france and bring zuleika to your father the young man joyously obeyed and in a very short space of time monte cristo's daughter came timidly and blushingly into the presence of the count massetti leaning upon the arm of her betrothed whose countenance fairly shone with happiness the youthful pair were accompanied by madame morel when the presentations had been made the venerable patrician stood for a moment contemplating his future daughter-in-law so this is zuleika he said at length she is a beautiful and charming girl and i do not doubt that the attractions of her mind are fully equal to those of her person my child he continued addressing monte cristo's daughter i welcome you to my home and to my heart make giovanni as happy as i know he will make you now my children accept a father's blessing the young couple knelt at the old man's feet and he extended his hands above their heads when they arose he took zuleika in his arms and tenderly kissed her in the general joy valentine was not forgotten the aged count renewing to her the expression of his gratitude he had previously made to her husband in her behalf it was ultimately arranged that the marriage contract should be signed within a week and this formality was complied with in the presence of many of the young viscount's relatives of monte cristo mercedes monsieur and madame albert de morcerf esperance and monsieur and madame morel mercedes and the morcerfs having come post haste to rome to take part in the auspicious event monte cristo gave his daughter the dowry of a princess and his liberality was fully matched by that of the count massetti who settled upon giovanni a fortune equal to that of some oriental potentate the marriage took place in rome and was a grand affair the wedding festivities lasting all day and far into the night the happy occasion had the character of a public rejoicing for the populace grateful to the count of monte cristo and maximilian morel for the suppression of luigi vampa and his dangerous outlaws who for years had been the terror of rich and poor alike paraded the streets in vast bodies in honour of zuleika's nuptials with the man whom the notorious brigand chief had so nearly succeeded in overwhelming with irretrievable ruin and disgrace from a very early hour in the morning the palazzo massetti was surrounded by cheering and enthusiastic throngs and by eight o'clock the vast gardens of the massettis were thrown open freely to all who chose to enter 
the preparations there were on a gigantic and princely scale huge tables had been placed in various broad alleys and literally groaned beneath the weight of the abundant and inviting refreshments while vast casks of excellent wines were on tap an army of servants waited upon the people liberally supplying them with the appetizing edibles and the exhilarating product of the vintage the papal and french flags were everywhere displayed in company and the beauty of the decorations of the gardens was such as to excite universal wonder and admiration the health of the viscount massetti and his charming bride was drunk thousands of times amid acclamations of delight but throughout the whole colossal assemblage perfect order was preserved the military police on duty finding their occupation a sinecure immediately in front of the palazzo massetti a triumphal arch had been erected it was covered with the intertwined ensigns of rome and france and at its apex bore an appropriate motto formed of creamy white orange blossoms and scarlet roses the interior of the palazzo rivalled in dazzling splendour the most superb and gorgeous vision that ever entranced a devotee of hashish while dreaming under the potent influence of his favourite drug in the principal salon were gathered many personages with whom the reader is familiar all in festal attire the count of monte cristo and his beloved wife mercedes their friends maximilian and valentine morel esperance mademoiselle louise d'armilly and monsieur and madame albert de morcerf many noble relatives of the groom were also present to say nothing of hosts of acquaintances old count massetti who seemed rejuvenated and whose venerable countenance was wreathed in smiles of joy moved about among his guests the happiest of the happy presently a door was thrown open a valet announced the bride and groom and giovanni entered proudly with the lovely zuleika hanging upon his arm her beauty heightened by her blushes and diffidence she wore a magnificent robe of white satin that a queen might have envied and the radiance of diamonds of inestimable value flashed from a tasteful necklace that adorned her pearly throat upon her night-black hair rested a wreath of orange blossoms and her flowing bridal veil was fastened back by a sparkling emerald pin a murmur of admiration and approval arose from the guests as they beheld monte cristo's daughter and noted her unequalled charms the procession to st peter's was witnessed by compact masses of spectators who loudly cheered the bride and groom and hailed with tumultuous applause all the well-known personages as they in turn appeared within the vast cathedral the concourse was immense but was kept at a suitable distance by uninformed ushers the pope himself united the young couple in the holy bonds of wedlock having consented to do so in consequence of his high esteem for the massetti house the oldest and most aristocratic in his dominions and out of consideration for the count of monte cristo whose wonderful history had penetrated even the august portals of the vatican at the close of the impressive ceremony his holiness blessed the newly made husband and wife and immediately afterwards the grand organ burst out with a triumphal peal an unseen choir chanting a jubilant marriage hymn whereupon the bride and groom surrounded by their bridesmaids and groomsmen esperance holding the first place among the latter received the congratulations of their relatives and friends that night there was unbounded festivity at the palazzo massetti the glad celebration terminating with a grand ball and an elaborate supper the next morning giovanni and zuleika started upon an extended bridal tour which was to embrace the most interesting portions of europe eventually they settled in paris as they had originally decided where giovanni bought a magnificent residence furnishing it with all the luxury of the orient their married life was as happy as it was favoured and zuleika never had occasion to regret that she had clung to giovanni when all the rest of the world seemed to have deserted him esperance and the young husband at once became as fast friends as ever and the dark cloud that had separated them in the past was completely forgotten 
the count of monte cristo and mercedes continued to lead a tranquil and charming existence in the palatial mansion on the rue du helder upon the elevation of louis napoleon to power the count who distrusted him and his schemes abandoned politics and the agitation of public life forever contenting himself with doing all the good in his power and aiding the needy in a quiet unostentatious way his daughter and her husband spent a great deal of their time at the family mansion and the count and mercedes acquired additional delight thereby albert de morcerf his wife and mademoiselle louise d'armilly remained inmates of the monte cristo residence aiding not a little in promoting the comfort and happiness of their generous and agreeable hosts maximilian morrel and his wife returned to marseilles but they were frequently in paris and never failed to find vast enjoyment and gratification in the society of the monte cristos the massettis and their friends giovanni's father died a year or two after the marriage of his son leaving him his title his palaces his vineyard and all his colossal wealth but even this change in his condition did not induce the young count to return to rome where the sad associations of the past were too powerful for him old solara expired in the hospital at rome a few days subsequent to vampa's trial and annunziata lived long with madame de rancogne in the refuge at civita vecchia drawing what consolation she could from abundant good works peppino and beppo remained in the service of the count of monte cristo leading honest and upright lives walmann and siebecker were caught red-handed in the commission of a murder and ended their iniquitous association on the scaffold the knife of the guillotine ridding the world of two extremely dangerous wretches as for danglars he suddenly disappeared from paris one day and was heard of no more End of chapter thirty. End of Monte Cristo's Daughter by Edmund Flagg.